<clears throat> so let's pull a point off of this, and then this will be ready to go. The rollers are what I like to use if I'm pulling <clears throat> points. I did, thank you for checking. I have this little like clicky remote thing. That's nice. If I remember to pair it. So often people will use two rollers. I generally just gravitate to using one just because for years I literally only had one set of rollers. Um, and two definitely gives you stability that you wouldn't have otherwise, but I also like the like the kind of flexibility of working with just one. If you're pulling a lot of points, I really recommend getting like a point block, uh, like a piece of wood with holes in it. Um, or if not, I just make sure that the only thing that touches the metal is the handle. This is like where you cut yourself, like this, like doing this move. Um, this is where I often cut myself too. Okay. So just, uh, you're breaking open a, a crack, just make sure where it's breaking your hands are as far away as possible. And then I will tap it to get any little shards of glass out. Are you sharing this video? Yeah, I'll put it on YouTube. Yeah. Are you going to flame polish the You know, I, I, I would. I, I would tell you to. Um, but... I just don't want to burn my mouth because I'm going to blow like if I was doing production like prep work I would just polish it but since I'm like just going right into it I'm just gonna when I'm your patient with it I uh, like wait like maybe like a minute or so yeah and then I bucket in water oh that's smart yeah I just stick it like far it's a little counterintuitive I stick it far enough into my mouth so that it doesn't like make contact with my lips <laughs> Yeah, but you I'm making sure my tongue's not in the way. <laughs> okay. So I got a little round bottom here. Um, I'm going to just puff out this bu bubble a little bit more before I put the handle on. This sort of order of steps really just is dependent on what shape you're going for. So I think I'm going to go for like more of like a, this type of a tapered... Uh, Yeah, exactly. Is the handle not necessarily going to be the stem? Exactly, yeah. The handle will not be the stem. You you could do it that way like production style. Like some people will like literally like put the stem right onto here, flare it open, and then like stick the foot right on and flare it open. Yeah, like that is like a production method. Thickening up the skin on the bottom a little bit.
Um, with, you can do this step when the handle's on, but it's sort of easier to like do it a little bit ahead of time, I find, um, so that you're not accidentally heating the handle. We're gonna put a, we're gonna put the handle on. And this is uh, where you might do like your volio, which is that connection point, is what hot shot people would call that. Either way, you want it to be a hot seal. I'm gonna shape this, actually, I'm gonna shape the bubble a little more. I'm not 100% happy with it. Oh, like the solid bit? The uh -huh. uh, volio? I-O. And that'll be your attachment point to the handle. Then I'll, uh, so I'm still gonna do a hot seal. Just in case I forgot to say it later, I'm gonna tell you guys now, flame annealing. Just a reminder, it is your friend. Just uh, keep working on the habit of flame annealing uh, after you make your parts. Really anytime, it's a good thing to do. All right, so now I'm gonna, uh, like the handle's on straight, so every part of this I'm gonna align to be with the back handle. build in an even heat base. Give it a little more heat, focusing on where the bubble could be, could stand to be puffed out a bit more. So I'm like pausing right in that area and then continuing to turn. set up is what it looks like so far for you kids at home. Okay. Um, I'm going to do my flame cut and you don't, it's not terrible. So you wouldn't want your flame cut to be, um, you want it to be in like a pretty even area. So like this is a pretty good, like imagine you're taking something to the diamond saw and you wouldn't want to like cut like a bottle or something that had like some weird random like shape indentation in it. Like that, that would be kind of weird. Um, so it's like 
similar idea. So the way I like to do a flame cut is get a, like a small hot, like ripping hot, but small flame. I have my outer oxygen, my inner oxygen just sort of raging. A little outer oxygen on if you want. I'm gonna pick an area and just concentrate the flame on that spot. It's gonna be loud, it's kind of annoying. Um, and try not to move it at all. And here's something, I'm holding the flame underneath the glass, not like right in front, but like underneath. This allows the flame to wrap around the outside of the glass due to something called laminar flow. And that really allows you to heat more at once. Once I see that line of heat, I'm gonna rip it. Bam, we get a, like a thin membrane like that. There will be a little cleanup to do. So I'm gonna, I like to sort of do minimal when I'm cleaning up to my lips, so I'll see you. Um, I'm just gonna heat, focus the flame right on that section where it's thinner and let it uh, shrink back up and kind of even a little bit, even itself out like that. And then we'll uh, do that a little bit more. Then very gently, I like basically kind of like a, gently tap it kind of with the graphite. So um, there's a little bit of inconsistency right here at the top and I didn't trim it like some people do and I didn't wipe it. Um, I'm gonna try, I'm gonna do the wiping and um, you can kind of see that firsthand. So uh, I'm looking where it's a little bit higher, small flame, small rod, heat that lip and just kind of wipe it to the side to even it out. Make sure your rod is, your little rod is cold, not hot, or else you'll add material when you're trying to take it away. So it does something. I will say that um, if you're doing that, you want to do it before you start flaring at all. Um, but any kind of like weirdness in the shape before you flare it, when you go to flare it, it is gonna like just magnify that. I try to like to get away with not doing anything, like not wiping, not shearing. Um, but then it was like a little more messed up, so I wanted to try the wiping. Um, but with just the gentle uh, press, you can get a lot done. Um, so, you know, another thing you can do is you can do a lip wrap, like wrap a bit of like stringer or rod, um, and that you would do before you flare it out, like at its most tight. So that's like a basic cup shape. Um, but yeah, you can see most of my shaping look, is uh, really happened before I took it off and ripped it. Any questions about that? Cool. Do you guys want to see it with the shears, with the diamond shears too? I want to make that. Oh yeah, alright. 
I, I have to decide what I want the stem to be. Uh, maybe a, maybe it's like a tree or something. Um, yeah, shears. These are Jim Moore shears, but they're pretty nice. Um, Take this and make it into a stem. Okay. Yes. Can do that. Freestyle. Freestyle. One's challenge. <laughs> Might want to like. What? Yeah, just Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm thinking like I might need to like bridge, make a little connection there, stick it on. Well, let, let's see how the foot turns out. Um, <laughs> take it from there. Alright, um, I can try doing the foot with the, with the shear, with the, this method. Um, Full disclosure, I don't usually do it this way, but I want to show it. I want to show you guys uh, how you might want to. So, oh, I know those crazy. What? You can make the foot roots. Yeah, yeah, yep. You I, can. I know this is like a demo purpose. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, and honestly, that is easier. <laughs> Making roots, you ask me, it's easier than making a perfect cup. <laughs> so you know. <laughs> okay. Um, let's close this down. Yeah, yeah, that would be a sweet cup. A little tree of life. What'd you say? I'm glad that looks as messy when you do it as when I'm I like, do whatever, it. Whatever, it doesn't matter. It's just about getting it close. Exactly. Yeah, I just tried to do like Leave the up down look right. Yeah, it's not part of the finished piece. important thing that um, I didn't do in the last the demo I just did but I usually do is constrict down the neck of the shoulder of the point before I blow it um, and Nicholson talks about that in his video too but that is a really helpful thing to do because it gives you like a lot of stability where the neck or the shoulder or whatever you want to call it that connection point on the point uh, gives it more structural integrity so that like if your bubble's really hot it's not it's nearly as likely to move around with the constriction so like this is where the constriction would be you feel me um okay that was for later This is a, a longer section than I would need for a foot. So we won't use the whole thing.
a little wasteful, but it's the only point I have that's room temperature. <laughs> it's like a witch's brew. <laughs> you can heat up your coffee with that. <laughs> I like that. I actually used to do that. They had these things called, uh, I think they were called salamanders, but maybe that's the flat ones. But, like, I can't remember the name, but it's just a metal rod that they like, just don't get like drinks to warm them up. like to do. I like it to be a, like, like a little more stable. It doesn't have to be like crazy thick, but whenever I'm sealing solid on the hollow, I want that. I want to be intentional about that thickness. I like it. You like it. Thank uh. you. Heat this glob up and hang it down, like gravity stretch it out a little bit. everything with the, the handle now. Now this is a, a really great time to do a constriction. As soon as you have a handle on, even if it's not your permanent handle. getting that quite hot and then if you don't have your necking tool just come out let it condense pull it out wait a second go back in and do that again so we'll get tighter if you're using the necking tool spin really fast oh yeah I was gonna do the I was gonna do the tallying method Please, yeah. Um, how it's gonna come out in just a little bit with the sign up for uh, Jeff DeMarco. So I recommend, highly recommend everybody take advantage of that. Even if you've done it before, um, the thing about learning is like, you know, we're different people every year because we learn more, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, I highly recommend if you've already taken it, take it again because you're gonna, you're gonna learn something more. Is that the photography, definitely, the photography definitely. thing? Yeah, because especially if you put the skills into practice, um, you'll know better which things you're gonna learn more from this time around. Yeah. Uh, but if you haven't put it into practice, get the refresher before you need to again, because I promise you won't remember what you learned last year if you haven't done what you learned in yeah. the past year. So Excellent. everybody should be signing up for this. Um, it's a free workshop because of a grant. Uh, it doesn't always, you don't always get those opportunities, um, especially for photography workshops. Oh my gosh. Quite pricey. And to have somebody photograph your work, really crazy. <laughs>
Yeah. So Holly will bring That's this thing awesome. out to you guys at some point here before your class ends, okay? So Thank you for the reminder, Chris. That's yeah. excellent. Yeah. 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 Because the dates, the birthday just changed. I don't remember what it was. Or the whole Well, she said, she said, try and take the first class. Otherwise, if you don't, um, otherwise we take the last class on Friday. She doesn't want to because she takes during class, but she said she'll give us permission. That's what it was. Yeah, even if you've done it before, I think that's a great point. Like, you'll still get new things out of it. I'm gonna do it. I think we're all first, first in the art. No, we're not. Oh, you did the art. Yeah, ah, right on. Gotcha. And it's any photographs your work for you, which is, <laughs> what? That's crazy that that's a free resource if you go. I'm just uh, shaping this neck or whatever you might want to call it of the foot the ankle ankle yeah i'm like <laughs> human anatomy totally applies here um stretching it out like a little bit just to make it more of an elegant shape that's totally up to you it also sounds just like seth Rogen. oh does he yeah definitely sounds seth. just like seth Rogen. <laughs> he laughs just like um laughs just like it's hilarious that's awesome all right i'm just gonna do a flame cut here because i forgot it's okay this is how I prefer to do it anyway. So kind of like on a nice wide point of the bubble. Looking for that orange line of heat. When it starts to move, just pull it really fast. So get those blips. Clean this up like with the thing I always do. Okay, now let's clean this up and see what we might want to do here. For the photography, somebody was taking Je Jessica size class last year and they made a big spider web and they knew there was no way they could get it home. So they were trying to take pictures with like their cell phone and stuff and I had my real, my real camera and like I, so I took pictures for him so that he had a way of like really getting pictures because that's really nice. Can't capture everything. Yeah, so sometimes the piece isn't going to last. It depends. So Is it that one? It's about being able to get exposure and depth of field. Um, like, like, you, know, you see it? Like, yeah. Yeah. Okay, you see the big giant spider? Yes, 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 that one. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't realize he had hung it up here. And he gave me some glass for it. So when you're flaring out a foot, like, same principle applies. You want the lip to be as clean and even as possible. And any kind of like, if there's like a part where it goes like, ooh, when you, when you flare it out, it's going to be like that times a million. Um, so just a heads up, um, this is the time to really shape it if you can. Um, but you're just going to have to make like a bunch of, you're going to have to do it a bunch of it to be good. And that's totally fine. All right, so now I'm gonna uh, get ready to flare this up, out. I have a nice long handle. Um, this is important because um, you're gonna need the counterweights. So I'm using an eight millimeter handle. Another thing you can do is like just even fuse a like a uh, couple, an inch or two of like even thicker rod and use that as your counterweight of plenty. And that actually helps you spin it faster. So I sometimes when I'm making goblets, I'll just have um, one of those just on my bench that I just keep using each time. We're going to start by really concentrating the heat uh, on the lip, getting that really hot. And it's like that heat gradient that we talked about. Start the flame there. I'm kind of angling it in. And then I'm going to slowly start to spin. Spin, spin, spin. Keep it in the flame. And I'm going to come on out. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, not bad, but it really is like a one and done kind of move. I mean, there are times where I have like reheated up and re-flared out foot, feet, and it works, but ideally you do it in one go. Um, yeah. 
and um, if you have a foot that you're not really happy with it's kind of maybe wonky little uh, secret is uh, get your knife and then you go whoop, 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 whoop. and then you can have these sweet little scallops that look super intentional and expensive um, <laughs> Uh, yeah, and expensive, so yeah, that's our, um, do you guys want to see me make this into a cup? Heck yeah. Alrighty, let's see, what would I want to do? Right. First of all, you check, are the proportions good? They're decent, it's not the nicest cup, but you know what, I'm gonna, I don't even need to qualify. That's pretty nice to me. Thanks, yeah, from four feet away, it looks good, thank you. <laughs> I look good on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, maybe I'll, I just want to think of my attachment points, so maybe it'll be like, yeah, like that. I'm very interested to see how you do it. You're interested to see how I do it? Yeah. Like, what, what, what? I was just fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it's like. Challenge accepted. Yeah, right? I'm like, a little bit. <laughs> Is that the sandblast? Yeah. So I'll probably just re, re sandblast it. And then I want to think do I like to put the foot on first or the cup on first? I'm not sure. Kind of depends on whether I put the foot or the cup on first, depends on the shape of both and what claw grabbers I have and how nice they sit in the claw grabbers. Um, a consideration. So you're, you're gonna branch the petals because you just think maybe great gradient heat could help them? I just want like, no, no, I want to create like an attachment point for that. Um, and I think a petal is, oh, I mean, okay, okay. I feel like a petal is too delicate of an oh, attachment I point. Okay. Um, I mean, it could work, but I kind of have to like make it too thick. Yeah, we'll have to re sandblast it. So for those of you watching at home, this is going to be the, the goblet stem and I put a little connection point in between these. I'm going to make that a little bit more material for the connection. like these uh, inside out claw grabbers. They're my favorite version of a claw grabber. Uh, I find they're a little bit more stable, I mean, but I don't really use any of the really like crazy, fancy, expensive Herbert Arnold, Arnold 
I mean, come on. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. Um, but that's kind of always like a big challenge. Uh, make sure you're, you feel comfortable. Like, are your claw grabbers going to do a good job to hold your thing? If not, reconsider. Um, maybe, okay, that feels pretty good. But maybe it means just um, uh, holding, figuring something else out. But I have, I'll just let you guys know, I have broken cups, um, like, when I was, like, first starting out, in a way that made me very sad, because just the claw, they, they fell out of the claw grabbers that I was using that were, like, you know, the, like, $25 ones, um, and then that same day I went and got Griffin glass claw grabbers that were much better. So, that will happen. Seeing two design choices sort of present themselves. One is to like just continue to bend the stem into the stem of the cup, and then one is to like remove the stem and sort of do that same move um, and bridge the two like bottom petals together and make that a stem. I think that's what I'm going to go with, actually. I was going to use the flower stem, but I don't really like how un, like out of plain it is, so. I think that was the right one. Thank you. Thanks for your affirmation. <laughs> A lot of just decision making in the in the moment, right? Like. Seriously, you're gonna do it like that. Like, <laughs> yeah. It'd be too small and weird to do up and on. Yeah, like I like that idea. Like I think with a little more like R and D, that could be like a really sweet stem, like a flower stem, and maybe that has the roots and whatnot.
was that? Yeah. the flowers are cracked yet. I because I, I don't know if I annealed it or not. Just so you know, I'm being like quite careful, even though it might not look like it, with my claw grabbers, because I'm kind of doing like a lot of things on them that normally I would have just done, uh, like when this was like before I attached it, if I had like, you know, planned it out, but, um, all right, cool. Looking at that, very sweet, yeah. Yeah, wedding cup. So I need two grabbers, pretty much, ideally. The making cup. Much all the all the companies will. Yeah, Blast Shield will give you a 15% off for me too. I just messaged the guy like last week. That's nice. Where? Blastshield.com. Blastshield is like great. They're known for making these things to go in front of your torch to keep you from getting hit by stuff. Oh yeah. But then yeah. they sell all sorts of other stuff too. Oh nice. Yeah, really good product. Blast Shield is where I got my mini tip for my Smith mini torch. I really like it. And I also fully endorse the Blast Shield. I would be using it right now. I like to use it whenever I blow big glass. Just really keeps, it does amazing things to keep the heat off of you. Like the satisfying moment. Just flying by the seat of your pants, no big deal. I'm just glad the demo went okay. Um, and then there, there will be maybe like a little bit of those like sort of stretch mark looking things, which you can. Uh, use your hand torch to just fire polish out or this is the time where I get low and um, look at it on the bench and like do any like adjustments if necessary to make it straight oh. <laughs> 
Okay, and I think I'm happy with that. I mean, the cool thing too is that like, if I'm not happy with it, I can just come back another day and uh, <laughs> work it. Thank you so much. Yay, that's our cup. <laughs> Thanks for the idea, Aeon. Credit me. <laughs> Conceptual collab. I'm glad you like it, <laughs> right? Yeah, the sandblasting is nice. I would probably just go in and maybe sandblast a little bit more, but... Um, yeah, that was a fun little design right there. Awesome. So that's cups. Cheers. <laughs> Where's my lemonade? Take it for a test spin. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I think that might